Okay guys, so what I'm actually going to do now is actually demonstrate a, an intubation. So my patient is pre-oxygenating. I'm going to get a little bit of lube on some uh, gauze here. Quickly get the stylet lubed up. Choose my tube that's been pre-tested. I'm going to insert my stylet. And the general distance, I don't want to see the stylet come out the distal tip of the tube like that. I never want that to be the leading edge. So I want it to be hidden back in the uh, behind the tip of the tube. I'm going to put a bit of an anterior curve on this, what we call the hockey stick curve, something like that. Lock down your stylet. Get my cuff inflator on. Give the little distal tip a bit of a, a loop so that it passes through the cords easily. Try to keep this as clean as possible. Check again the function of my lithoscope. Open up my package and get my CO2 uh, detector. Uh, and I'm going to get some tapes ready at this time. Generally what I do is I make a long piece of tape like this, it's going to go right around the patient's head, and a smaller piece that I'm going to use is backing. I'm going to put the backing closer to one side of the tape so that both adhesive sides stick together, something like that. And essentially the rest of it I'm going to wrap up into a tongue depressor so that it's easily accessible when I need it for my securing. And we'll show you how to do this in the lab. Essentially, that's my prep for securing my UT tube. Make sure that's accessible to me. Okay. Um, I think I'm getting ready to go. So, if my assistant or my physician is starting to pre-medicate the patient and he's starting to become uh, ready for intubation, I'm going to remove the non-rebreather mask. Ensure that my suction is on and ready. Everything's working there. Take my resuscitator bag and establish bag mass ventilation using the proper CE grip, pulling down on the or pulling up on the mandible and pushing down on the bridge of the nose. Verify chest rise and watching my saturation to ensure that I've actually got oxygenation established. Okay. Ideally, the position of your patient should be a little bit higher. You should have the nose about the xiphoid process. So this time, I'd get an assistant to elevate the table, increasing the position and success chance for me to establish this error. So that's probably pretty good for a position for me. My patient is pre-oxygenated. I'm going to put my uh, resuscitator bag down. I'm going to open up my laryngoscope and get my tube that I've prepared with the stylet. At this time, either my assistant can hold it or I can place it right there on the patient. I'm going to insert my laryngoscope on the right side of the mouth and do a big tongue sweep and start identifying anatomy the second I'm doing the laryngoscopy. So I can see the uvula, the hard palate. I'm using a curved blade, so I'm trying to look for the epiglottis and get into the molecular space. Once I see that molecular space, I'm going to get into it and put some anterior pressure. The second I see the arytenoids and glottis, I'm not taking my eyes off of it. and introduce the tube from the same angle as I did with the laryngoscope. As soon as the tip of the tube gets through the cord, that's when I would ask my assistant to pull the stylet. As they're pulling the stylet, I would be inserting it. Just to a depth that I feel is satisfactory, so the black line is through the cords. Inflate the cuff. Put my end tidal CO2 connector on. Take my resuscitator bag that's connected to oxygen source and confirm placement. I can see I've got chest rise. I've got CO2 color change. And at this point, I would take my stethoscope. I would listen for bilateral breath sounds. I would listen over the trachea to ensure a nice seal on the uh, ET cuff. And finally, I would listen over the gastric area to make sure that there's no uh, ventilation of the gastro or the esophagus. Okay. This should all be done within 30 seconds. We should limit our attempts to about 30 seconds. Uh, if you're successful in 30 seconds, now is the time for you to secure the tube and move on to ventilating your patient.